Hello everyone, and thank you for watching this video. Today we are going to talk about classification models and different ways to evaluate them. We're not really going to deep dive into everything, we'll just go over the definitions themselves to kind of help us make sense of everything. In my experience, these definitions can often be confusing and they can scramble together one with another. And well, hopefully this video will help you make sense of everything. Now, suppose we want to train some sort of classification model that will help us predict whether someone has a certain disease or does not. If someone has a disease, then we refer to that as a positive sample. And if someone doesn't have the disease, then we refer to that as a negative sample. And when we have this classification model and a new person, a new sample arrives, then that model should be able to predict whether it's a positive or negative sample. And when we look at the outcome of the model compared to the real world, we can divide these outcomes into four different groups. True positive, false positive, false negative, and true negative. Now, to kind of understand these definitions better, let's use this table down here below, which is also referred to as a confusion matrix. Now, if we only look at the actual class and the positive class, well, everyone who has the disease, if the model was correct and predicted some instance, some, someone is positive, then we refer to that as a true positive sample. Looking at the positive class, if the model was incorrect, we refer to that as a falsely predicted negative. Again, now looking only at the negative class, if the model was incorrect and predicted it as positive, then we refer to that as a false positive. And if the model was per correct and predicted it as negative, then we refer to that as a true negative. Okay, now th there's a few other notes I would like to say regarding this um, slide. One is, well, it's easy. It's I guess it's, it would be easiest to remember what's everything. If you remember that everything that's true, well, the model was correct about. And everything that is false, the model was incorrect about. Regarding the false positive, it is also referred to as, well, sometimes as type one error and sometimes as a false alarm. And the false negative is sometimes referred to as, well, a type two error. Another thing you might want to notice is that, well, if you look at other tutorials and other videos which explain this, then sometimes people switch the actual class and the predicted class, and that results in the definitions inside also changing places. So. You, want, you, you might want to pay attention to that as well. Now, moving forward, what we want to do is to understand these definitions better through visualization. So we'll, we'll take a look at two different visualizations. In the first one, what we have is, well, the two different distribution, the positive, people who have the disease, and the negative, people who do not have the disease. And the horizontal axis over here can represent well, whatever we want. I mean, oh, if we're talking about a disease, maybe a good idea is to represent it as, well, maybe some sort of medical test that has a numerical value, maybe a blood test with a numerical value. And the y-axis, the vertical axis, represents the number of people, the number of samples. So uh, looking only at the positive class, um, well, relatively, there are many people in the positive class who have these values of the medical test uh, uh, value. And well, when we train a model, we get a threshold. And then when a new instance arrive, and on that new instance, we do not know if it has or does not have the disease. And that instance takes the medical test. If the value is above the threshold, then the model would predict it as a positive sample, and if it's below, then the model would predict it as a negative sample. And you can see by this visualization that the threshold divides our data into four different groups. Connecting that to the previous slide, again, looking only at the positive class, the threshold divides it into the 
truly predicted positive and the falsely predicted negative. And looking only at the negative class, the threshold divided into the truly predicted negative and the falsely predicted positive. Let's move forward to talk about the next visualization. Over here, we have the two different classes and our model prediction is represented by this blue rectangle over here. So anything inside this blue rectangle over here, our model predicts as positive. And we connect that again to what we saw in the previous slide. So looking only at the positive class, we can divide it into two different groups, the truly predicted positive and well, whatever is outside and is the falsely predicted negative. And looking only at the negative class, it's again divided into two groups, the truly predicted negative and the falsely predicted positive. Okay. Next, we are going to talk about, well, these definitions, which are widely used in machine learning and data science and statistical analysis. And it's very important to understand what they mean. Um, let's start with accuracy, which I guess it's easiest to understand and all, probably also easiest to explain as well. Accuracy is defined as well, whatever is true or truly predicted, true positives and true negative divided by, well, everything. So if I'd had to put it in words is, well, how well did your model perform regarding the two different classes, positive and negative? How many instances was the model correct about? Um, moving forward, let's talk about precision. Precision is defined as true positive divided by true positives and the false positives. Well, whatever's inside this blue rectangle. So trying to put that into words, it's how well did your model perform regarding its prediction of the positive class? Moving forward, let's talk about recall. Recall is defined as, well, true positive divided by true positive and the false negative. So, well, again, trying to put that into words, Recall is defined as, well, out of the positive class, how well did your model perform? How many instances were correctly identified as people who have the disease? And the last part in this section is the F1 score, which, well, looking at its definition, it's the least intuitive. It's defined as recall times pre precision divided by recall plus precision and all that multiplied by two which is the harmonic mean of recall and precision. And well, we use F1 score when we compare different models. And let's say one model has high precision and the other one has low recall. And the other model has high recall and low precision. We really can't tell which one would be better. And well, that's where F1 score comes into the picture. Another use for F1 score is that, well, you saw what accuracy does. Accuracy, well, that, that calculates how well the model performed regarding the two classes. But if they're not evenly distributed, well, then that's where F1 score comes into the picture and it's a better metric to evaluate the performance of the model. It's also important to know that F1 score is also referred to as F score and F measure. Moving forward to our next section, let's talk about sensitivity and specificity. Sensitivity has two other names. One is true positive rate and the other is recall. So we already know what it means. It's the same as recall and it's actually very common in statistical analysis and again, data science and machine learning. Um, to, for, for, for different measures for the, or the same measure to have different names. Uh, again, it's very confusing, but it's also important to understand what, what each one of these uh, definitions mean. So if you remember, if you recall what recall is, then sensitivity or recall or true positive rate is the true positive divided by true positives and the false negative, which again, putting it in words is how well did your model perform regarding the positive class? 
specificity is something that we have not encountered yet, and it is referred to, uh, or another name, is true negative rate. And it's defined by the true negatives divided by the true negative and the false positives. So again, trying to put that into words is how well did your model perform regarding the negative class? How many uh, instances were correctly identified as negative? Moving forward to our last section, let's talk about ROC and AUC. ROC stands for Receiver Operating Characteristic Curve. And well, so when you hear what something stands for, usually that helps you understand what it means. And I, I don't think this is the case over here. Uh, I will say that ROC was developed somewhere in the 1940s by the military, and it was used to evaluate uh, radar systems, and that's where the name comes from. And well, what we do over here is that we calculate for a given model, we calculate for many thresholds, well, the performance of the model. And for each threshold, we calculate two different parameters. The first parameter is the true positive rate. And if you remember from the previous slides, it's the exact same thing as recall and sensitivity. It's true positive divided by true positives and the false negative. So how well did your model perform regarding the positive class? The next parameter is the false positive rate, which is false positive divided by false positive and the true negative. So putting that into words, it's out of the negative class, in how many instances was your model incorrect about? And intuitively, we want the true positive rate to be as high as possible and the false positive rate to be, well, as low as possible. Because, well, we want to have more true positives and we would like to have, uh, well, less false uh, positives. And if you search for an ROC curve online, you'd probably see something like this. What we have over here on the horizontal x-axis is the false positive rate. And on the y vertical axis we have the true positive rate so the best threshold performance would be uh, at this point over here one for the true positive rate and zero for the false positive rate obviously that's very hard to achieve and well what we have over here is a different dot each dot is represent represents a different threshold and well that helps us choose the best thresholds that we would like to use for the model now that's one use, choosing the best uh, threshold. Another use is when you compare different models, and that's where AUC comes into the picture. AUC stands for Area Under the, well, ROC Curve. And, well, if we have two different models, and for each model we have an ROC curve, the first model would be represented by the blue uh, ROC curve, and then, well, the next, the second model would be represented by, let's say, this. Um, uh, blue, uh, red uh, curve, and well, the area under the blue curve is smaller than the area under the red curve. And if we compare the two different models, then we would estimate that the model represented by the red curve is probably better. Okay, well, that's it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it was helpful. Let me know in the comments below, and also let me know if you'd like me to make any videos on any other subject.